Fantastic. So thank you again, everyone, for coming to today's check-in. And um, my apologies for the delay in the start time. This one is a really check-in, so I don't think that there will be anything um, that will keep us over time in terms of that half hour mark. I'm just going to make sure that my other laptop is muted because we'll do love to ping and troll during presentations. So there we go. Um, as this slide says, go ahead and join us in the back channel, either on the meeting chat uh, for this um, sort of interfacey thing, or also in IRC in Pound DrupalCon. And I will monitor uh, both of those chat spots. Everyone is muted at this point. So you can uh, disable video if you've got your camera turned on and you don't want to be watched necessarily during the presentation. Um, but I will have a couple of opportunities where I'll unmute everyone everyone that they can ask questions as we go along. Um, also, IRC I mentioned, Twitter uh, or email as well. If there's anything, if you're having a hard time getting set up or anything like that, I'm pretty decent at monitoring all of those channels as we uh, proceed. So I'll um, do my best, but you, you may need to jump up and down a little bit more than usual just because this is a new system for me. All right, so here we go. Today, what we're going to be going through are some brief introductions in terms of who I am and why you have been asked to attend this session. We're going to talk a little bit about our expectations for you as a presenter at DrupalCon, um, really briefly in terms of what we think goes into a good presentation for DrupalCon, and then some next steps. And I think it's a total of about seven or eight slides. It's really, really short. So this is not going to take a long time um, and really is just an opportunity for all of us to, um, to connect and sort of get together as a group um, and talk about presenting at DrupalCon, which is super awesome. All right, so here we go. A little bit about me first. Um, I am perhaps best known in the Drupal community for having knit the Drupal box, which I did in 2007 or 2008 for my good friend, Walk been giving me an outrageous amount of free Drupal help at the time and really helped to launch me into my Drupal career. I've since written a couple of books and have speaking, spoken at uh, a lot of Drupal cons, I guess is the best way to say it. I, I'd i have to stop and actually count and I should, I should kind of know this one, but it's in the range of more than five, fewer than 10 Drupal cons. We've been running the, the speaker check-ins or speaker training series in some form or form or another since 2009. And I think that overall, it's really helped to improve the quality of the sessions. Um, even if people aren't able to attend each one, it's just a little reminder, kind of a couple of weeks out or six weeks out, as I think we are from the conference about what you should be doing as we proceed into DrupalCon. So why we're here today, um, just a, a chance to help speakers prepare uh, appropriately for their presentations. I should have a little here. I love to draw on things. Oh, wait, I have a laser pointer somewhere. Oh, new technology. Oh, I've lost my laser pointer. This is probably better for everyone, actually, if I don't have my laser pointer. So why we're here today is to help speakers for appropriately for um, their presentations for the DrupalCon audience. We're going to be giving you a bit of information about um, who the audience is if you're new to Drupal. Just in one of the two chat windows, can you um, give me a heads up? Are you new to Drupal? Are you like an outside subject matter expert who's coming in to talk to us about um, the, the outside world of non-Drupal things, or are you more of a person? So again, either in the meeting chat or in IRC, can you just let me know, are you new to Drupal or are you a Drupal community member? So, so far in the chat, we've got fantastic. Jonathan has been to 12 DrupalCon, or will be going to his 12th DrupalCon. Uh, Mike has only been around for a year. So I uh, said so Drupal since 4.6, fourth DrupalCon. So a lot of experienced people here. You probably have a really good idea of who the DrupalCon audience is overall. Um, and I'm seeing um, Eliza411, Melissa. Hey, Melissa, over in the uh, IRC channel as well. So this is fantastic. Um, folks here definitely have experience with Drupal. And then um, Jonathan is also bringing someone from Mozilla as a co-speaker as well. So this is, this is great. This is really awesome to see. I love it when the community gets involved and actually participates in these sessions. So for, for you, the, the 
the Drupal community is a known quantity, but for some of you, the Drupal community from the perspective of standing on stage might be a new experience. It looks like we've got some new speakers here. So the next part is going to be um, of more value to you. We'll be giving you a bit of information about presenting, and especially if you're new to presenting at large conferences. I like to think of it as simply being more efficient with your time. So you've got the kind of presentation you might have given at a camp, but instead of giving it to a single camp audience, you're going to be giving it to the equivalent of, you know, four or five camp audiences all at the same time. So it doesn't need to be scary, um, but it, it will be a bigger audience for you. And then we're also going to give you some support in delivering the best presentation for your personal style and community audience. Um, an entire webinar, the next webinar that we do on actual presentation style and delivery and preparing for um, a, a preparing your, your speaker aids to deliver the best possible experience. All right, and we haven't done the labs before, so I don't know what our expected audience size is, but perhaps Stephanie, who's in the channel and is from the DA, could answer that question into the chat window, um, and then I will um, reply back into the recording for other folks. There we go. So Stephanie says that we have a capacity of 100 people. So I would say that's the equivalent of a very large camp room. But as far as past Drupal cons have gone, that's a, a medium to small sized room. So your expectations or the expectations that we have for you are um, hopefully something that you were aware of before you submitted your presentation. The biggest one that I'm going to start with, even though it's the second bullet point, is that we expect you to really spend chunk of time getting ready for your presentation. Generally speaking, when I am preparing a one hour talk, I will spend no less or fewer, I always get those two mixed up, I will not spend less than 40 hours, four zero hours preparing for a one, where's my finger, my one hour talk. Um, if you are able to commit this amount of time as well, it's about, it's just seven hours per week between now and DrupalCon. So if you're able to spend an hour a day, and this doesn't need to be an hour a day of time in front of a slide deck. This is like thinking in the shower probably counts for 15 minutes or maybe more or less, depending on how long your shower is. <laughs> um, it could be while you're out for it could be any, any kind of preparation time, any time that you're spending on thinking about what the presentation is and how it's going to be structured and how you're going to deliver the best possible message or if it's a really code intensive session, you could be spending some of that time actually in the guts of your code, figuring out how you're going to simplify the concepts down to be able to present them to someone. This doesn't necessarily mean, as I said, 40 hours in a slide deck, but it does mean if you spend the time now, you don't need to spend all of it the week before DrupalCon. So what we're going to, um, what we're going to also ask is that in your presentations, you respect the audience who shows up and also the audience online who will be watching the recording later. In past years, I have been um, more likely to deliver a presentation that was geared in its sense of humor to the audience who was in front of me. And over time, I've come to realize that as our sessions are mostly recorded, this doesn't necessarily put our community in, and I wider open source sense of the word community, it doesn't necessarily put us in the best possible light to attract new contributors, new volunteers, new software users. And so I've really tried over time to think about myself on stage as being a promoter for our software and our cause and our community for the audience who will be watching a year from now or maybe even two years from now. And it's it's something to remember as you're structuring your talk and the jokes that you add in. Are they are they something that are internal jokes for our community? Are they something that will deter someone from getting involved? And really, we can make this a positive and fun experience on stage. It doesn't need to be in any way nasty or uninviting to new people. The other thing that we ask that you do is that you show your progress as we lead up to DrupalCon. And we've got a number of check-ins, which um, some of them will be 
directed by your track chair. And some of them will be, again, actions that you can take now in terms of those hours per week leading into DrupalCon. We also expect that if you have questions that you go ahead and ask them. This could be about the format of your presentation, the content of your presentation, the audience we're expecting to have show up, or just about anything else. So again, we expect you to ask questions when you've got them. There's absolutely no, um, no reason to, to not feel like you're part of a community. And this isn't me standing <laughs> up on a pedestal. This is simply me who's coordinating things and you who is the expert in your topic domain. I mean, like, you got selected, go you, this is awesome. Um, but but maybe there's some things that we can help out with too. So we want to collaborate with you. We want to work with you on your presentations. <laughs> yes, and thank you, Stephanie, for helping with all the audio problems in the meeting chat window. I've been watching that uh, watching that go by and that's um, super helpful to have that help. And again, if you are having problems, um, I feel free to drop off if you need to watch the recording later. All right, so our next piece is actually on the content. And as you, again, spend time in the shower or in your walk or at dinner or wherever it is that you happen to have time to work on this, what are some things that you should be thinking about? And I would say that for me, these are the things that are always top of mind. Yes, I need to know the content, but I also need to know who I'm presenting that content to. So I need to think at the time, and you will have selected this when you proposed your session, is this a beginner, an intermediate, or an advanced topic? And am I going to approach this coming at it from the very beginning or with a bunch of assumptions in mind? So if you're thinking about, mm, let's let's pick theming because I'm most comfortable with, with uh, theming presentations. If I'm going to be talking about pre-process functions, I've got some assumptions about whether or not the audience knows PHP. I've got some assumptions about whether or not they've ever done theming. I've got a bunch of assumptions there that I'm really comfortable making. And it helps me to narrow down that presentation when I know my audience. And it helps me to deliver a really solid, useful piece of information, a useful presentation if I can think of a few, maybe like six people who you'd love to have in the audience and you'd love to tell this story to, to be able to convince them to maybe change their ways or start using new software or start submitting patches differently. And, uh, <laughs> along with this, having a passion for your story. I'm guessing that everyone who's in here loves the presentation that they proposed to DrupalCon. Um, and don't admit it if you don't love your presentation topic. However, in the meeting chat, or in IRC, can you just throw out maybe one of your favorite things about your presentation topic, just so that people can get a sense of the stuff that you are currently excited about? So again, in the meeting chat or in IRC, what's the thing that you're really passionate about for your particular topic? And that, that like blank in the audio means that yes, <laughs> you need to actually participate in this presentation. It's not a street push webinar. So again, what's the, what's the passion? What's, what is it that makes you super excited about this topic? So Micah is super excited about prototyping. And awesome, it's going past too quickly for me to actually getting more people to uh, support Drush and Contrib, how to deliver solutions to problems. Awesome. So the, the next piece of the puzzle as these start sort of flowing past as well, I know it takes a little while to, uh, to actually type these things in. Oh, Melissa, I love it. Eliminating repetitive manual click testing. No one wants to do that. <laughs> So as part of your presentation, start thinking now, what's the hook for your presentation? What's the one thing that um, we don't call them elevator pitches anymore. We don't call them, um, oh, like, you know, how would you say this in a Twitter? There's, there's lots of different ways to think about it. But what's the hook? What really draws people into this topic? What's the pain point that your presentation can relieve? And that hook can be something that is part of the description. It could be in the title or simply in the presentation itself. How can you get people to remember your session for the content that you're delivering? 
so that when they go home from DrupalCon and most of you have a fair amount of community experience, you know that your brain is going to be fried by the end of the week. So what can you do in that presentation to make your experience more memorable than everyone else's? And I would say generally having three things, no more than three things that people need to remember as part of your presentation is great. So again, narrowing down that focus. And I would say that humor alone is not going to actually get people to remember your content. It may get them to remember you as a rock star or you as an entertainer, but they won't necessarily remember your message and they won't necessarily be able to implement any of the things that you felt were important and you were passionate about during your presentation. Humor is also very, very subjective and very difficult to get right in an international audience, both for the folks sitting in the audience at the time and also our future audience. So I'd be careful with using only humor as that hook in your presentation. And finally, in your presentation, I think that asking people to take an action based on the presentation, giving them homework of some kind is another way to, again, help to cement or solidify what happened in your presentation that they can immediately put into use for their workplace or their community contributions. So simplify it down, have something that is memorable about the presentation, and also have an ask or some kind of action-based task at the end of your presentation or in your presentation that people can take away and immediately think about how to apply the lessons they learned from your talk or your lab at, at their place of work. Some quick resources for you in terms of the uh, the beginning stages of the presentation. I, I tend to be a book person having written a couple of them myself, so my apologies here on these uh, resources. Um, but I, I have quite liked, and if I can grab them, here we go. Here's the, so Beyond Bullet Points is actually surprisingly good, even though it's a PowerPoint um, specific book. The first third of the book is how to think about structuring your talk. Um, and has... Uh, I don't have the bookmark, the page bookmark, has a fair amount on um, using templates and post-it notes and thinking about how to structure your talk before you ever actually open a piece of software. The next one is Slideology, which is Nancy Duart's book, and also less so Resonate, same author. Um, I think Resonate is less useful for our particular needs. And then finally, Presentation Zen, um, Gar also has uh, um, Presenting Naked, I think it is. He's got a couple of other books, but I haven't got those ones. So those are my favorite print resources. And Stephanie's also got a page set up on the DrupalCon website, prog2013, drupal.org, slash speakers, slash speakers, speaker hyphen resources. In the, um, both of the, the meeting chat or in the IRC channel in Pound DrupalCon, do people have other favorite resources that they use from a um, preparing your presentation point of view? So not pretty slide decks. We'll talk about that next time. But how do you think about actually um, structuring? How do, you, how do you go about getting ready for your presentation? Are there any good resources that you can share with other folks? So Nathan's suggestion is simply to watch other presentations. Nathan, do you have some favorite presentations that you can share the URLs of? I love watching TED Talks. I'm kind of a TED Talk junkie, to be honest. Uh, Fabian's presentation at Munich, yep. Yes, and Ricardo's suggestion is simply to be passionate. And that's kind of, um, it's sort of a, an easy thing to say, but Luke W's keynote at Denver was awesome. I agree. Yeah. Just checking IRC as well. Any other external resources that folks can think of, we can definitely add them to that speaker resource page. 
um, I'm, I'm going to let it sort of continue to flow past and just let folks see those resources as they come up. So our next steps today was the first webinar, the getting started, the kickoff. The next um, point on this list, this week you will probably have a check-in with your chair. They may or may not initiate this, but this is a chance for you to check your session title and your session description to make sure that it still accurately reflects reflects what you plan to present. Sometimes code changes, sometimes contrib modules change in a way that you need to adjust your presentation. So we're just going to do a check and make sure, is this still the session that you think you should be presenting? Go ahead and talk to your chair about that. It could be by email as well, that's fine, or, or IRC, whatever is easier for you. August 22nd, we have our next webinar, where I'll be talking a bit more about presentation styles and some and tricks. I also have some examples of slide um, presentation, like just sort of the actual slide, some of which I think are good and some of which I think are not quite as good. Um, so we'll give some, you some do's and don'ts for the actual deck. The week of August 26th to 30th, we will have a progress update with your chair. I used this opportunity leading into DrupalCon Portland to hop on the phone with my track chair and we spent probably 30 minutes or maybe even close to an hour going through some of the the parts of the presentation that I just, I wasn't quite sure how to deliver them to the audience. I knew what I was passionate about, but I wasn't sure how to fit it into a one hour slot. So it's just, again, a content specific check-in with your track chair, or if you want um, slide deck feedback, I also did a fair amount leading into Portland with folks who just, they weren't quite sure if their deck was too long or too short or those kinds of things. So we can do that as well. And that's an ongoing thing. It doesn't need to be limited to that week, but do expect to be pinged the week of August 26th by your track chair. September 5th, we have our final uh, webinar, which is all about delivery and audience management. So how to deal with trolls, how to deal with questions, how to deal with technical failure when the laptop doesn't connect to the projector, those kinds of things. Um, and then finally, the week of September 9th, we offer the opportunity for you to do a presentation run through. This could be, whoops, as I tap the mac microphone, this could be through something like Fuse Meeting, like we're in now. So you would deliver the presentation to uh, a small audience, which could include your track chair. Or um, if you need folks to sit in and, and give feedback, just give me a shout and I'll, I'll see what I can do that week to help you out. But that's that's kind of, you know, giving you enough time that you can still make adjustments to the the actual presentation and be be rehearsing it and be awesome at DrupalCon, which I'm sure you will be. Finally, we've got a slide of the actual track chair um, contact information, just in case you aren't familiar with who your track chair is. I'm guessing that most of you already know your track chair. This is the final slide. So I'm also going to pause now, give you a chance to go through uh, and find your track chair if you don't already know who it is. And I'm also going to unmute the microphones and see if there's any other follow-up questions. It, we are at the half hour mark and I promised that we would be um, not more than half an hour. So feel free to drop off if you need to get back to work or perhaps um, if you're in Europe, get back to your family. It is uh, the end of day for you. All right, so. Let's see, I unmute everyone. There we go. There we go. Okay, so question. Oh, if you do have a set of speakers turned on, can you go ahead and mute your microphone, which is on the top left hand side? So the question in uh, the meeting chat was, are labs first come first serve or do people need to sign up for them? And the answer is labs are first come first serve and no registration is required. Any other questions that people have? And if you don't have questions, if you um, if you drop off the call, we will make sure to post the answers and the questions as well later on. Um, but it'll just give me a better sense of who's actually still here if you do drop off the call if you're done. Um, is there a slide deck format depending on this session room. I don't believe that the slide deck format would change. All of our 
um, projectors should be delivering at the same thing, which I believe for Prague was four by three, but Stephanie should be able to confirm that. Generally, we don't have an introduction to the speakers unless it is a featured speaker. So again, if you're a featured speaker, you may have an introduction. Otherwise, you will be responsible for your own introduction, at least based on past Drupal cons, that's been true. Right, so if you're bringing a guest from outside of the Drupal community, then please do make that part of your presentation to give them an introduction. I, I don't, Jonathan, I'm sorry, I don't remember all of the featured speakers. I'm assuming that you're not a featured speaker because I don't remember any dual presentations as featured speakers. Yeah, he's, he's not a, a featured speaker. Okay, yeah, so you would be responsible for that introduction. Okay, that's Which is sometimes good and sometimes bad. <laughs> no, I'm I'm eager to introduce them to the community. Awesome. What kind of microphones will be used? I'm not sure that that kit has been confirmed yet. I have always advocated for lapel mics. I personally have a loathing for standing behind a podium to deliver my session. Um, Stephanie is well aware of my preference and has always done the best to accommodate, but the lapel mics are extremely expensive. I don't know if they have been included with the Munich, or sorry, with the prog kit or not. <laughs> As Stephanie just said in chat, yes, she is well aware with a smiley face. <laughs> I had some strongly worded emails coming into Portland. <laughs> Um, what is the room layout for the labs? I assume it's stadium seating. Let's just see if Steph can confirm that. Oh, Steph's just confirming. She thinks it may be classrooms, which would be amazing. I hate giving long talk into like into stadium style seating awesome so it looks like we have classrooms for the labs those are mighty big classrooms um steph maybe that's something you could also send out in the email to the lab folks um if it's like circle tables how many people at a table that would probably be useful information for folks that are delivering lab sessions i think i've got all the questions so far Okay, I don't see any new questions now, and I don't want to keep people longer than what they um, sort of signed up for in terms of that half hour commitment. So I'm going to end the meeting now. I will continue to monitor IRC again in pound DrupalCon. And um, if there are any other questions, then I will make sure we get those answers out to everyone and we can also post them on the speaker resource page if it extends beyond um, just a, a question that you had for yourself. Absolutely, we will be making the recordings available. Um, if you also want to skip ahead, it's virtually the same presentation that I've been giving for as long as I've been doing this. So you can go back and watch the Portland version or the Munich version or the Denver version or <laughs> there's a, a several recordings floating around the internet. Okay. So again, thank you so much everyone for uh, showing up today and participating and asking your questions. It's so fantastic to, uh, to see everyone. I'm really excited about going to Prague. I'm really excited to see you and I am really looking forward to seeing your presentations. I'll see you in the next webinar. Thanks very much.